Hi, my name is Brian Hughes and I'm with the School of Psychology here at NUI Galway and my group conducts much research on psychophysiology or the impact of mental stress or mental emotions on uh, physical health and physical health systems in the body. Now there's been a view throughout history that you can die from misery or loneliness or literally from a broken heart. The ancient Greeks and Romans felt that many emotions were reflected in the body and that people with different characteristics and different personality types had different body shapes and body functions. And fictional accounts of mental anguish throughout history often have involved an accompanying physical decline. One good example of this is Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights, uh, a novel in which many of the protagonists come a cropper as a result of various stressors and depressions and events in their lives. But nowadays, uh, we often feel that these notions are myths or superstitions or, in the case of fiction, artistic license. However, there's actually a very consistent line of research linking emotional function to the brain and to physical health and disease in the body. And one of the most compelling examples of this relates to cardiovascular function and especially to the notion of cardiovascular stress reactivity. Now, most of us are somewhat aware of heart rate and blood pressure and their implications. I mean, heart rate is literally the speed at which your heart beats inside your chest. Blood pressure is the pressure placed on the vasculature and on your body as a whole as a result of these heartbeats. And all of this relates to the manner by which the body circulates blood and therefore oxygen around the body to make it work. So most of us are also aware that heart rate and blood pressure increase during stress. Uh, it's part of the fight or flight response. Now with physical stress, we can use this energy in various constructive ways. We use oxygen in our muscles to strengthen and move those muscles very quickly. But with mental stress, we don't expend the energy particularly well, and therefore sustained or repeated cardiovascular stress responses create several complications. So much of this research is premised on what we call the cardiovascular reactivity hypothesis. And this is the established link between elevated cardiovascular stress responses and particular disease outcomes and disease mechanisms, which have been demonstrate, demonstrated in research studies. So for example, if you're the type of person who has a high stress response, then you're the type of person who is more likely to develop what we call cardiac or vascular hypertrophy. That is literally the changing shape of your heart in response to overuse. You're also more likely to have elevated blood insulin concentrations, which contribute to complications in diabetes. You're more likely to have elevated pro-inflammatory cytokine concentrations, which interfere with your, but the body's ability to recover from injuries. You're also more likely to have lower levels of high-density lipoproteins, the so-called good fats, and higher levels of low-density lipoproteins, the so-called bad fats. And over the course of a lifetime, you're more likely to experience a gradual upward resetting of blood pressure, of resting blood pressure, which is itself a risk factor for the development of heart disease. Now, in our lab, we conduct a program of research that seeks to map out the shape and limits of the cardiovascular stress response and to examine the various factors that make cardiovascular responses better or worse for people when they deal with stressors. We used a standardised lab procedure to administer controlled and calibrated mental stressors to ordinary healthy people under controlled laboratory conditions. And we've tested thousands of people over the past decade or so. We've used this information to help map out how people tolerate different types of stress, uh, different durations of stress, how they acclimatise to stress over time, how things like sleep deprivation disrupt the stress response, or whether different personality traits are associated with different forms of stress response, and so on. All of this has big implications for our understanding of cardiovascular disease pathogenesis. This is the process by which cardiovascular disease takes place. Now, cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of premature death throughout the industrialised world. And mental stress, whether it be interpersonal stress, job stress, post-traumatic stress, or living with chronic challenges such as poverty, is recognised as one of the major risk factors, and we would say contributors, to heart disease development. When you look at the association between poverty, say, and heart disease, you can see that the independent risk associated with stress is similar to that associated with things like smoking or physical inactivity. So understanding the cardiovascular stress response is hugely important. So yes, you really can die from a broken heart. And while it's not quite as dramatic or romantic as an Emily Bronte novel, it's certainly not a myth.